Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I'd like to go over some features that got added to Repair Shopper that make dealing with shipping and mail-in customers way easier than it was before. This is very important to me because up until recently, mail-in was really just like 10, 20, 30 percent of my business. After coronavirus hit, it became over 65 percent of my business. In addition to that, the person that deals with all the shipping and the inventory and receiving was out for about a month and a half, so I had to do my job plus the shipping person's job. So it became incredibly important to me that shipping be as streamlined as possible. And unlike a lot of other e-commerce solutions for buying stuff online where they've already figured out how to make shipping very streamlined, I noticed that most repair shop ticketing software really is antiquated when it comes to dealing with shipping of any kind. We had some sort of freelancer.com, Fiverr-ish hack put together to try and streamline things and make it easy, but since about a month ago, I don't have to deal with it anymore because Troy at Repair Shopper added a feature that I'd like to show you all that makes all of this incredibly, incredibly easy. I also wanted to show my gratitude because every single time I've come to Troy at Repair Shopper and said, hey, you should add this. Hey, you should add that. Hey, I know that you probably can't charge money for this and nobody but me is going to care, but you should add this. They, they just add it because they actually care about their software being useful to repair shops. So I'd like it to sync with QuickBooks. Sure. Oh, hey, I'd like you to set it up so that it integrates with my PBX software so that when a customer calls, not only can I see their name on the caller ID, but I can tell which status the ticket is in. So when everybody here looks at the phone, we don't have to transfer the customer to the person who should pick up the phone because you can tell who should be picking up the phone by the status of the ticket, which shows up in the caller ID. And I went over that in this old playlist over here, setting up a voice over IP phone system for use as repair shopper. It's a 22 part series that ends in showing all the different uh, ways that it works with repair shopper. And now he has yet again added a feature that I've, I've bugged him for which probably is not going to bring him any additional business. To be clear, I am not getting paid by Repair Shopper to do this video. I just want to show my gratitude for the fact that they have, when people make very useful software for me, whether it's Paul Daniels with Flex Board View and Open Board View, or the Multimeter Software, or Troy at Repair Shopper. So let's go over what this does. So when you are ordering something online, let's say from Amazon or eBay or a Magento store, the moment that the order is created, it's automatically sent to shipping software along with the item that they purchased, the SKU so that you know what slot it's going to be in in your store, the shipping method that the customer used, and when you hit the ship button in your shipping software, the shipping software, it typically integrates with Amazon or eBay or your Magento store so that it sends the tracking information over, it marks the order as completed, it prints a shipping label for them with the address and everything on it, and it says what it is they purchased on a packing list so that all you have to do rather than ship every order manually and copy and paste information is you just click one little checkbox for all all your 60 orders and it will ship them all. With Repair Shopper and many other pieces of Repair Shopper uh, software in the past, I didn't have this. So every time a customer paid for a mail-in, I would have to manually copy and paste their address over, manually figure out what type of shipping method they wanted, manually figure out the weight of the ticket based on the type of, of the model of device they had, and then create the shipments one by one. This is incredibly time consuming and incredibly annoying. I was able to kind of get around this a little bit in the beginning by using PayPal for my repair shopper mail-in orders and have a separate PayPal account and then have the PayPal link to my shipping software because most shipping software will integrate with PayPal. But does it resolve the ticket? No. Does it know the weight? No. Does it know what shipping method they chose? No. And so it was pretty useless. This is a full integration that's been added. So what happens is when an item comes in, I can say that it's a mail-in. I can then say that this is a mail-in for a device that weighs two pounds. I can say what method of shipping the customer wanted, or the customer themselves can choose the shipping method at the time that they pay the invoice. Once they've paid the invoice, only if it's a mail-in, it will go to my shipping software. My shipping software will know the weight of it, the shipping method the customer wanted, their address, all of their information, and then I hit ship and it will print all my shipping labels for all my mail-ins for that day. Since the weight, the shipping method the customer requested, and all of that information like their address is already in the shipping software, I don't have to click ship one by one and, and adjust these. If I have 24 boxes to send out today, I hit one button, I hit ship, and it's done. It will then take all the tracking information from all those shipments and automatically put it in the ticket in Repair Shopper, automatically resolve the ticket in Repair Shopper so I don't have to go back to Repair Shopper to resolve the ticket after I've shipped it. It's amazing. 
it puts Repair Shopper ahead of a lot of other pieces of software when it comes to dealing with uh, if you are a depot. So if you're doing 500 or 1,000 or 1,500 repairs a day and your business is primarily mail-in, most of the Repair Shop software on the market is really kind of closed off to you because it doesn't have this type of integration. So let me just go over how this works with uh, with ShipStation here. And I am going to trust Hi Hi to be editing out where the names of the customers show up because I don't want people stalking my customers. So here is a screen that you see in ShipStation. So in ShipStation, it is showing me a bunch of shipments here. And as you can see, it knows the shipping method that the customer recommended. We use Priority Mail as our free shipping method. Customers are free to choose Express Mail or anything else. For each of these, it knows the weight. So this, I believe, was... Uh, was a th I think like a cell phone repair or something. So we just labeled it one pound because it's only one pound. Now let's, let's click on to something else over here. This is like one of the newer MacBook Airs. Probably you could see that says that this is three pounds over here. So it knows the weight of everything already. So I don't have to go through all of these tickets and click weights and shipping methods and copy and paste addresses. What I do to ship everything for the day is I click this one button over here. I click create and print label. There's one order where there's where they probably put the wrong address or I have to figure out their address, so I'll just hit continue over there. Now for the rest of the shipments, I just hit the continue button. It's buying all of the shipping labels right now for those 12 shipments. It has created them. Now I just choose the printer. I hit print through ShipStation Connect. And it is sending all those labels to my Zebra label printer. It says that it's printed successfully. Now, check this out. I can go to any one of those tickets. I'm just gonna grab all my shipping labels. And once I've done that, I'm gonna go over and check out some of those tickets and show you that it has resolved the ticket, so I don't have to go back into Repair Shopper for each ticket and resolve it, which was wasting quite a bit of my time before. And just like that, I have a bunch of shipping labels for all of my customers. And with all these shipping labels, it also includes a packing list with the ticket number of the customer that I can then verify with the label that we put on the laptop. So if we're shipping out ticket 5,000, it says right here, ticket 5,000. When I grab the laptop, it will also say ticket 5,000, and I can confirm that before I ship it. Now, if I were to check any one of these tickets in Repair Shopper itself, as you can see, the ticket shows up as resolved. And when I scroll down, it says that the package has shipped via stamps.com. Here is your tracking number. So it has shipped the package. It has resolved the ticket. So I no longer have to go back into Repair Shopper after each shipment that I do manually. And it gives them their tracking number. And I have all the information here that I need so that if I have, let's say 50 shipments in a day, this saves an insane amount of time. This cuts down on a lot of time. Now before, since we did not have this, we had some really crappy Microsoft Azure a little script going where we, if anything said mail-in in the ticket name, it would pass it over to Repair Shopper, but it wouldn't pass it over with the weight, it wouldn't pass it over with the customer's desired shipping method, and it wouldn't close the ticket in Repair Shopper. And you may think that that's not really saving a lot of time, but it's actually saved enough time when you have enough shipments that my shipping person has been able to spend a couple of hours every single day learning board repair and and now, at the time that I make this video, around the end of August, he's actually doing board repairs on a regular basis because he had that much time saved from this feature that he's been able to learn how to do uh, board repairs, which I think is awesome. Now, there's one more thing that I think could get added to this that would make it just a little bit better, and I'm confident the team at Repair Shopper can do this, even though I, they kind of finished programming it and it wasn't included in the specification that I wrote for them because I'm a crappy customer. But one more thing that I, th I just thought of that could actually make this even better. So over here, there's, a, there's an area called relevant assets. And in the relevant assets area, what it does is it allows me to put this customer included their charger, this customer included their box, and they find their box sentimental and they want it back. This customer included whatever enclosure with it that I need to make sure is with the computer and send it back. If there was a way to have that included on the item description list, so with e-commerce software, usually it will pass over the title of the item and the SKU number of the item. If there was a way to pass that through over here so that I know on the packing list, this customer included their red case that they find sentimental and want it back, 
Also, if there's a way to include the slot number that the ticket is in, so that rather than having everything on a particular shelf, we could say, this is in B6, this is in B8, this is in B10. Otherwise, this is absolutely amazing. And I've yet to find repair ticketing software that is really that willing to add features that make this type of difference. If you are a primarily mail-in facility and you think that stuff like having the customer's name and status of the ticket show up on your caller ID, having that integrate into the ticket so you know every single time they called, integrating with QuickBooks, and integrating perfectly with shipping software is awesome, but you held off on Repair Shopper because it did not integrate with shipping software, I'd highly suggest giving it another look because it's not, I'll be honest with you, it's not just features like this that save me time that are what I value about Repair Shopper. It's the fact that when there's something that could help people in this business do their job better and it's brought to their attention and it's a feature that's probably not going to make them more money, they just add it anyway. And frankly, ask Paul Daniels in, in Discord when it comes to software feature requests in general. I, I am one of the worst users on earth and I, I just have a, a soft space in my heart for any company or programmer that, that's willing to put up with me. But that's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. And if you are already using Repair Shopper and were not aware that this integration existed, uh, it does. To my knowledge, it does not cost any more money. I, I have the $100 a month tier with them. I've had it since mid-2013, and it, it's already added and it already works with ShipStation. I did switch from ShipRush to ShipStation in order to use this because they said it would have been much easier to program this properly using ShipStation than ShipRush. And I've kind of, the interface of ShipStation has been growing on me. So that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now. And if you haven't really set up a PBX like this, I really suggest that you do. If you're using the phone system that comes with your cable or, or your television or anything like that, you can't do cool shit like this the way you can with free PBX. And like th 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 this is this is really cool. So you, you can set it up here and they've, they've added a security feature to it that makes it a little bit better now. But you, you can see in this video how when, when someone calls, it actually says, so S is for Steve and then the name of the customer. So if someone is calling the business, rather than the receptionist picking up and then the receptionist having to transfer it to Steve, if the phone says from S, we just yell, hey, Steve, phone call, or Steve just sees it, and then he picks it up. It saves people from having to wait on hold, which is very difficult when you're trying to take phone calls without putting, you know, without having a phone tree. It allows people to have slightly less hold time when things are very busy, and it allows the calls to be efficiently routed to the person who should be picking them up. So let's say I have one person that has, to, has five or six calls on hold. If two or three of those are for Steve and Steve's phone is empty, Steve can know immediately, I should pick this call up because it's for me and so on and so forth. It allows the phone calls to be distributed evenly, and it makes things a lot easier. And when there are things that could be added to the software that would make the lives of the people that are in the repair industry easier, they're usually the first to add it. So I will stop rambling now, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye now.